closed. Sport offers a painful reminder of a marginalized existence, often lived on the sidelines. Lois, you've been playing sports for years now as a disabled person in Nigeria. Can you talk a little bit about what the level of acceptability has been? We are making progress. It's a gradual process, but we really need to put more efforts and encourage disabled sports in Nigeria. As you could see, when I was coming, I had to be carried because the entrance is not accessible to me. There is no ramp on this staircase. So two hefty men took me in my wheelchair and they brought me into the court. Some of them are just at home doing nothing. We can encourage them to join sport and make themselves busy with sport. The Paralympians did very, very well. I did just concluded Paralympics in 2016. All the gold medals Nigeria got, they came back home with it. But even a well reception um, dinner was not planned for them. There was no prizes, nothing to motivate them, nothing to encourage them to go further in sport. This kind of thing discouraged disabled sport. It's heavy. It's okay. Even mundane daily tasks taken for granted by millions of able-bodied Nigerians on a daily basis remain beyond the reach of many disabled persons in the country. On a daily basis, millions of Nigerians saunter in and out of banking doors just like this one across the country. And what is taken for granted by an able-bodied majority is merely an aspiration for a silently suffering minority. But this young leader demands to be heard. I have money in the bank, but I don't have access to it. Why? Because I use a wheelchair. I need a ramp here. I need an open door to enable me to go into the banking hall conveniently and confidently. Even the ATM machines is not accessible to me and I have money, I cannot withdraw it independently. This is what we are talking about. We need access. On a scorching Abuja afternoon, we pay a home visit to Lois Alta. Good afternoon. My friend, how are you? Uh -huh. So where are we going to? Let me follow you. So this is Lois's place? Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming us. Epileptic power supply in Nigeria forces this young woman to run the diesel generator as she prepares lunch. Faced with increasing costs of commodities and low energy supply, she chooses to remain optimistic that a better day is on the horizon if the Nigerian government acts swiftly.
Nigerian Disability Bill has addressed many disability issues. In that bill, we request that MDAs should reserve some percentage of their employment opportunities to graduate with disabilities. Then for the unskilled ones, we can place them on monthly allowance that will help them to, to also be independent. Then when we talk about access, yes, is a very, very important issue for wheelchair users and people that use crutches to have access to buildings, hearing impaired you have access to information and the visually impaired people should also have access to braille materials. We have the deaf, we have the visually impaired, we have the physically challenged persons, we have the albinos, we have people affected by Hansen disease and other cluster groups that need care and attention. So what I really want to plead is everybody should come together, let's team up and work towards signing that bill into law. Let's advocate more, let's partner together and ensure that the bill is being assented by the present administration. Yes, President Buhari has shown commitment by appointing senior special advisor to him on disability matters. But we need more of that. We want to see governors having disability rights commission in their states and those commissions should be managed by disabled people because they said he who wear the shoes knows where it pinches. So they should be given opportunities to manage their own issues by themselves. And secondly, I want to plead with Mr. President to sign the bill into law when it comes to his table. Lois attributes some of her outstanding leadership capabilities to her experience interacting with influential leaders in the United States after she was selected as a Mandela Fellow under the Young African Leaders Initiative, YALI. It was an amazing experience attending a leadership program at Arizona State University for two months. Then from there we headed to Washington DC where we had presidential summit with President Obama who initiated that program. And I was opportune to get a handshake from him. It was amazing. I met with some members of the Senate and their offices when we were taken by our representative from the university. I was able to go to the cave. I went to, I, I visited mountains, caves, and all those places were accessible. I went with my motorized wheelchair and I really enjoyed access. This is what we are talking about that we need in Nigeria. In the U.S., I was independent. I walked through the workplace. I joined buses without being assisted. I bought trains without being assisted at all. So if government officials can implement these issues in Nigeria, it will go a, a long way in making things happen for disabled people. YALI program has been very, very helpful to me. I got many connections through 
yearly program that we are still partnering till tomorrow. U.S. Embassy has been amazing. They've been helpful. They've been there for disabled people at any time. They are part of the partners that we are working on achieving this um, Nigerian Disability Bill. Where Lois Alta sees inequality, she pursues equality. Where she encounters a gap, she builds a bridge. These qualities, among many others, comprise one of Africa's future leaders. Lois's ability to rise above her limitation and embrace her leadership role under difficult conditions is something that is not only remarkable, but also reaffirming of the fact that no matter what the circumstance dictates, we do have a choice in how we respond to it. This choice is often a gateway to destiny, as we see in the life of this extraordinary young woman. Next week on the program, our journey leads us to Accra, Ghana, where many distinguished young West African leaders gathered to share their experience and their thoughts on the future of Africa. Don't miss what these brilliant young leaders have to say next week on the program. My name is Ajuri Ngelale. Until next time, lead where you are and followers will find you. <laughs>